In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Jim Norton, baby. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. It felt sincere. Yeah, it was real. It was I real. It. Yeah. it was real. I met your I met I met your wife, your manager. Yeah, and our camera person. And your camera yes. person. Yes. You always bring a crew, an entourage? You're like a rapper? Never. Never do. My wife and I are out doing with some podcasts I'm doing alone, some we're doing together. And uh, Jonathan just drives us around, my manager, and Soraya has been shooting for our YouTube channel, and she's really funny, and she's got great editing on the fly ability. Um, so she's been kind of doing that for us. So she's filming us while we're out here. Yeah, she looks um, she looks smart. I'm always intimidated when I can. You know, when you can feel someone's just that like yeah. they look smart. Yep. Because I've looked stupid my whole, pretty much my whole life. Sure. And uh, even if I'm like trying to be put together, so you can still go. This guy's a state state educated kid. Yeah, this is yeah, not, yeah. There's no private school in this kid whatsoever. No, it's really weird how no matter what the outfit, blithering idiocy bleeds through. I get yeah, it. <laughs> it just like seeps out of my. <laughs> Were you a public school kid? Oh yeah, I dropped yeah. out of high school. I, I I dropped out my senior year. God bless. Good for you. Never graduated. Yeah. What did what did mm. what was the response when you dropped out from the family? Was it like we saw this coming? Both disappointed and we saw this coming. Mm -hmm. uh, did, we we saw this coming and we wished that we weren't right. That right. you were a flop. <laughs> I was a flop. I dropped out. Uh, yeah, about halfway through my senior year, I went to rehab and you know just that was the end of it. I thought about dropping out only because I was so bad at high school. Like I remember junior year, people applying to colleges that became like the start right. of the conversation. Like next year, it's coming up soon. All this stuff. And I, f I mean, it felt like a, f a movie, like yeah. a John Hughes movie where I'm like, am I the only one not interested in college? I was, I didn't know, I was like, I can't go to college, right? They right. won't let me in. I'm stupid. And then I got annoyed that I was like the only one not trying to go to college. And I think Arizona State's the only school that let me in. So God bless. Yeah, yeah. I went to one semester of community college where they took high, I didn't have my high school, where certain courses would give you high school and college credits. Yeah. Like, so I took like Western civilization, problems and statistics, uh, English, and one other thing. And I got three F's and a B. I got a B in English, which was merciful because he knew I was like just getting sober. Yeah. Um, but the F's were everything else. It was a disaster. But you were good. See, that's the thing though. As a comic, the thing you picked out, you're like, I'm, I'm good at English because I like language. Everything yes. else who gives, I can't, I don't care at all. Yeah, and he also, I think, took mercy on me because he knew that I just, like, I had quit drinking and doing drugs. So I think he was a kind professor. It was probably a C minus performance, but he gave me a B just to kind of, like, give me a little English teachers and English professors are always the most rad. Yeah. Well, there's room for error. There's room, like, they can. Like, a math, there's no way to spin it if you don't know how to subtract or you don't know what uh, you know, algebra, there's no way to fix that. Yeah. But English, you can always, a little more interpretive. Right. They can do that thing where they're like, well, this is how he, he sure. wrote half the words because that's how he feels <laughs> about the words. <laughs> like, yeah. That was my excuse always to my parents was like, when I, when I bailed on the work, I was always like, well, it's because I, it just didn't, it didn't connect with me. Yeah. It just really wasn't a connect. And it's really because I was a stupid, lazy bail out i just would just bail out of everything it smells very good in here by the way what is it it's uh it's him it's mccone my little producer Great. there yeah we make very, him, is that we, your cologne your bag what is that it's just for you <laughs> i love it it smells great what do you what have you dosed yourself in today I think we were just at candle. yeah he lit a candle oh man it's a nice smell time. very cool yeah we're we're big candle people here it's only because there's mm. this 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 whole studio is filled with men and it's very um there's days where it's disgusting because it'll be like falafel, sweat. Yeah. Yeah. The summers, this is not the nicest place. Right. Yeah. I came in a good time of year, I think. Well, you, yeah. Winter's always, this is like <laughs> Venice, Italy. It's like, oh, just come in the winter. That way you won't smell the trash. Um, I'm curious to know because, uh, again, just met your wife for the first time sure. and you uh, started a show with your wife um, and uh, you're touring now. You're back touring again. Yes. But you said before the show, I'm interested, you've never lived with someone. Your entire, you've only lived alone. Never, never. I mean, I lived with roommates, Jim Florentine and his girlfriend in like 2000, maybe 99 to 2002 um, roommates. But I, I've never had lived with a woman ever um, until Nikki. And that was during the pandemic. She was in Canada because she couldn't get into the U.S. 
over some stupid marijuana thing, so it took us five years of immigration nightmare. So I would drive up to Montreal every Thursday from New York, spend the weekend with her and drive home and go back to the radio show. And um, my producer, Travis, called and goes, hey, man, they might close the Canadian border. So I literally packed up a suitcase. Within an hour, I was on the road. I just drove to Montreal, and um, I was there from May or March of 2020 until July of 2021. So I was in Canada for 15 months during wow. the pandemic. And that, that was our live together experience. Right. For, forced, Excuse but me. also promoted. You were into it anyway. It's not like it wasn't, it was like almost they made you do it, but you were ready for it anyway. Thank God for the pandemic. It yeah. was a blessed, like the pandemic is one of the best times of my life because even though it was awful, I got to see what it was like to live with Nikki. I got to see if I liked it, if we were compatible. And we were. You know, it yeah, was like wild. it worked. We didn't we didn't kill each other. It worked really well. I know. I hate to say that, but for a lot of people, the pandemic was like a blessing. Like, I mean, I, I else for us, it was a blessing. Like Bobby and I started Bad Friends, the podcast together because of him getting out of rehab, his dad dying. He was, you know, it was like we knew something was coming. We were getting right. locked down. And then we were like, well, fuck it. Why don't we just make the show together? Test every day, have the crew isolated. And then. That was the most fun thing we got out of right. it. It was like we didn't have to worry about schedules. Like, dude, you're going to be in Omaha when I'm in fucking right. Miami. And it was just like we're here. We have nowhere to go. And that was my living. That was my first time living with an Asian an Asian man. Yes, yeah, understandable. Yeah. I've not done that yet. But if things don't, don't work out with she and I, I'm definitely <laughs> looking. Yeah. So the pod is you two that you started separate of your own show. It's just, it's you guys. Is it just about your relationship and your growth together and stuff? What is it? It's just slice of life stuff. Yeah. Um, cause everybody has opinions about trans people. So it was just this thing, like we're married and this is what our life looks like together. And it's not much different than most people's lives together. Right. That's kind of the point of it. Um, you know, and I think that we're funny together. I think our chemistry and dynamics are like very legit and, and good. Um, I'm not allowed to do a podcast because of my radio contract. Right. So we're going to do like a video one where we'll see how that goes. We, we're going to be putting up the first like test episode probably next week, but it's just trial and error. And call Jim and Nikki, yeah? Nikki and Jim, because I like the alliteration of that better. I like how that sounds better. Always. Jim and Nikki. I just didn't like the way that... Nikki, Nikki Jim. Nikki and Jim. It's also putting her first is more important. Yeah, I didn't mind it. We, we're not going to call the podcast that, because guy-girl names are just shitty. Nikki and Jim NYC is the channel, but it's easy to remember. Like We just did that so you, yeah. people would remember it, but I don't know what to call the podcast yet. What are the... What are the uh... That's funny when you're like, if people have opinions about trans people, as you can have Chappelle come and moderate one of the episodes at some point. <laughs> he, yeah, Chappelle would be great. Like, I, I'm not bothered by anybody's opinion. Like, I don't sure. care. Yeah, I don't give a f how people feel. Like, I, I, it doesn't bother me. Right. As long as they don't want to legislate that we can't do what we want in life, they feel how you want. I don't give a shit. Fact. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. That's like we were joking yesterday in the studio about, you know, I don't know how it even got into these political opinions or whatever. And call it maybe apathy, unfortunately, but if somebody's like, how do you feel about this, a gay marriage or whatever, I, I, I care so little about even arguing about yeah. it or whatever. That, and, and I don't know if that's healthy or unhealthy that I'm like, I couldn't care less. I hope everyone gets to do everything. So it's like, I just, I sh maybe I should be more involved in caring, but I just, I feel that way about most shit where I'm like, I don't give a f do whatever everybody wants to do. I think it it's doesn't all, bother me. I think it's all fake. Like it's so funny to watch. Everybody thinks that they are a uh, a warrior in the cultural battle, and it's just like you embarrassing douche. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Stop trying to be more than you are. They're like you know we must not relent. It's like everybody thinks that they're fighting the good fight. And it's just I, and it's like go fuck yourself. Like it's just. I, I'm not interested. I'm right. not impressed. I'm not offended by it. It's not upsetting. Right. I just find it boring, and I just think it's predictable, and it's just banal. I just can't stand it. Like, every, when people start to really get angry that their opinions aren't being agreed, I just, oh, I'm just bored I think it them. I think the reason people do it is because it gives people something to do. You know, it's almost like why people love gossip. It's because it's something to pass through time. Yeah. Because if they're not really satisfied... With whatever the f that's got going on in their life, if you're satisfied in what you're doing, you probably yeah. have little time to give a f about other people's shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't care, and I want to do my thing. It's hard for me to hear what someone else is up to, and to to be like, "What do you think about that?" It's like I don't f care to be. I'm sorry, but I don't care. Yeah, it's I, a little self involved, but I'd rather just do my own shit. Yeah, or I, I have opinions on things, but I don't care if you agree with them. Like I'm okay with people not agreeing with my opinions. I don't need you to agree. If other people don't agree with them, I can still like them. Sure, yeah. I don't give a. F 
Like, I, I know people are like, hey, you're friends with that guy. He's racist. I don't give a shit. I'm not. <laughs> I don't care what he is. <laughs> Fucking yell at him. Right. This divide happened be solely because of, uh, I think, the Trump division of America was like, you cannot be friends with this other person if they think differently than you. Yeah. Although we were like that before, I think it got became worse. I think the 24-hour news cycle really fucked everybody because that's what everybody just started noticing and becoming obsessed with the story and you couldn't get away from the story. But yeah, the Trump, Trump definitely, that was like, that made it worse yeah i, I, I should have polarized everything it became so glaring that it was like that's how you feel yeah Fuck you yeah and then they tell all their friends like i remember there were comics that we know i'm not gonna say but like guys that like on their page were like if you if you are even remotely associated with it, this trump thing or whatever it's like i'm blocking you deleting you it's like what <laughs> Who care? Why do you care what other people are up to? It's embarrassing because again, everybody has to. Everyone's identity is wrapped up in all this shit. Like, um, you know, Trump is way more. There's a lot of the hardcore right wingers. I, I can't stand the religious shit. But uh, I, I'm friends with Don Jr. Yeah. He was always great to me. I've interviewed Trump uh, for UFC not too long ago. He couldn't have been nicer. We talked all sports because it was a sports podcast. Right. And we talked all about boxing. And people are like, how could you interview him? I was delighted. And uh, <laughs> if Obama wants to sit down or, or, or Biden, I would give them the same amount of respect yeah. and, and, and adoration as a former president, as a current president. I would be delighted to talk to any of them. Yeah, of course. If Putin wants to come in and talk about and Sean Strickland, I'd be happy to sit down with Putin. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I think his right cross is, is weak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm happy to talk to any of these guys. It's like this this whole thing where so, like they're all mad at Tucker because he interviewed Putin. How many what other journalists have interviewed Putin before? That uh, they've interviewed uh, Bin Laden when he was in a cave years ago. Like who the fuck are you to tell someone not to talk to the former president of the United States? Right. Shut up. And the interview in the cave, by the way, it was like so sweet and heartfelt. It felt like yeah. it was. It was like so. How are you doing? It was, yeah. it was almost like an Oprah in a fucking interview. <laughs> well, you don't want to say the wrong thing either. You just got to agree. He's like, how am I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see a stump and a sword next to it. And you're like, that's where my head goes if I ask the wrong question. That's a pre That's a pressure. That's where you kiss the ass of the person yeah. you're talking to. You're a kissing little bit. the ring a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, you're yeah. on there. Yeah, they're, they're, they have home field advantage for sure. Yeah, oh, please. The skyline is much better without those stupid buildings. You were right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we didn't like that plane anyway. Those were bad. American Airlines is just not for me, man. Absolutely. I'm Almost as bad guy. as the Max, which will be coming shortly. <laughs> Dude, now I can't get that out of my head as much as we travel. Uh, like, jokingly, we were coming back from Reno and we were trying to flat out. It was crazy storm a couple days ago oh yeah we couldn't we were afraid we weren't going to get out and they kind of were like look we're going to de-ice but we might have to just go back because it. Sure. it was wild and the whole time i'm like oh god is this like one of those moments where they go we can't believe the door ripped off yeah like also we're flying through a storm because it was wobbly bobbly dude getting out was sideways and i thought is this where the wing just falls yep. off am i in that because i don't ever mind flying we fly so much but when it's storm weather i'm yeah. always like god this is it huh how bumpy was it pretty bad on the way up was bad bad after that we were fine right but i mean yeah. the way up was the takeoff because being from chicago i remember flying out as a kid all the time in, in storm in, in yeah, snowstorms. so you you got kind of used to it but this whenever you take off and it's side sideways yeah yeah, yeah. then i don't then i get yeah up. that sucks how far of a drive because i i i am uh oh wow it looks like there's it's gonna be cloudy rent a car yeah. and drive i'm so stupid i almost i was in austin not too long ago and a part of me wanted to drive back because the weather was going to be bad i'm like you pussy just get on the plane to new york i didn't do it that but is I mean, a forever drive the fact that the thought was there i should be executed how long of a drive would reno have been seven and a half i think it said seven oh, and a half or eight i would have been a car renting really fool. yeah for oh, seven see. and a half yeah. yeah buffalo toronto to new york 100 percent. because i did montreal every weekend so it's like that's six hours each way i would do radio be done by 11 drive right up see her wow. Drive home Sunday morning and Yeah, repeat. but you were going for love. We were just coming home. I, That's, was, I was actually going to make sure she didn't f*** any French Canadians <laughs> while I was paying the rent. <laughs> Jim, you're here so early. <laughs> yeah. Is she fluent in French? Uh, she hates French, as do I. Yeah. Uh, People or the language? Or both? The language. The yeah. annoyance of them doing it like in a pharmacy uh, and pretending like we would go to like St. Savour and other places and in the pandemic we went everywhere just to kind of get out of Montreal and uh, when they don't speak uh, English an hour from upstate New York it just it's hateable <laughs> yeah it's weird it's, 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 it's infuriating weird. yeah well every time I went to do JFL every time I ever went up there you know all the comics particularly West Coast guys because so, we're so far removed from that everyone's like it's like we're in Europe man we're like yeah. it's like no it's 
<laughs> not, dude. It's weird Canada. This yeah. is goofy Canada. That's yeah. all it is. You're not. You're not almost in Europe. You, no. you drive an hour from now. You're in a Toronto in a ghetto. You're not in a f-ing Europe. Yeah. Um, but I, I love. Look, I love Canada. I love the people of Canada. Same. They were very, very good to us. They allowed her to come over and, and, and stay, and they gave her a visa to stay, and they gave me a visa. Uh, as an American, you just keep re-upping it, but the Canadians could not have been nicer. So my, my life today is possible because the Canadians were so generous to us, so I f- love Canada. Yeah, they did, except for this weed charge that you were talking about. That is a big deal. Well, that was Nor- she's from Norway, so that was in Norwegian. Uh, they didn't stop her from going into Canada, but the U.S. put us through ringers for five years. She was rejected five times. It was a nightmare. Can you imagine 250 years from now, 200 years from now, when we joke, when we do, when there is, you know, a joke about getting busted for weed at the border, they'll be like, that, that was honestly a thing. No, she got, she got busted. She signed a ticket in Norway because she had sent a text message about it to somebody. And then the police arrested her friend on an unrelated thing and looked through her phone and found this text. And it's insane. It was a ticket that was signed. There was never possession. That's like psyop shit. That's crazy. It was It was so hard because you can't prove amount. You can't prove that it was below the amount that you need to get a waiver. It, it's the immigration lesson I got in five years. I mean, you become like a pseudo expert on immigration and right. what's wrong with it. But I also get why people sneak in. Like I used to drive in from when she was in Canada and think like I got to put her in the trunk and she'd be <laughs> in the country. Which I would she wouldn't have, but they probably have things that look in the trunk. I mean Right. But that was a fetish of yours was having having a woman in well, the trunk. Well, there've been so many before. I'm like, why not your wife or future <laughs> wife? <laughs> She'll actually enjoy it. <laughs> She's like, I don't think we need to be in the trunk. You're like, I think we do. Yeah, I can't get hard without the yeah, trunk. If yeah. I don't yeah. I'm not gonna come unless you're crawling out of the <laughs> yeah, trunk yeah. when if I pull it. There's not a into metal roof like a <laughs> inch over our heads, my dick won't function. <laughs> <laughs> But it was so, frustrating. So now, but now that happiness has ensued, now you're together in New yeah. York and everything is all good. What What is it? Are you still in this newlywed phase of like learning the things that piss you off when you live together? We've been married for two years and we didn't, we've been engaged since 2019. Uh, so no, I mean, we know each other very well. We yeah. argue annoying. You know, I mean, she annoys when we argue and she cries a lot when we argue. She just gets emotional. You know, it's like that shit that annoys every couple. <laughs> yeah. I annoy her because I go into lecture mode. Like, it's the stuff that annoys every couple. But uh, no, I'm happy. I'm so grateful she's here. Yeah. That even when I'm mad at her, I'm like, if, if they told you five years ago, this is what it would be. You'd just be sitting at home with nothing to do and she's bitching about wanting a new sofa. You would have signed up for this in a second. I would have in a second said, I'll take it. I would be, she's here. We're allowed to travel together and live together. It's, uh, it's all I wanted. So I'm yeah. happy. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I'm really and, happy. And you're now you're now you're is she going to come with you on the road cuz you got a bu- you have a bunch of tour dates this year? She comes. Yeah, like she gets bored on the road. Um cuz she and again Norwegians are very stoic weird people so like they don't get jokes. She's very literal as a person, mm-hmm. which drives me nuts. Like, there's no <laughs> subtlety or or nuance. No nuance? Yeah, two Jews walk into a bar. Why didn't they order drink? I, all right. It's just not That's it, the it's, logic I like it's though. It's that She's like, "Why are these Jews in that bar?" But you know what I mean? It's like that <laughs> level of literal thinking which it hurts, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she comes on the road with me and uh she gets very bored. Very bored. Well, I mean, so do we sometimes. There's the, even if I try to pack our days with stuff when we're on the road together, there are those moments in the hotel where you're like, oh, God, I, I want to be home so Are you married? Bad. Yeah. Oh, so do you bring your wife sometimes or no? Pretty rarely because she doesn't want to go. Right. You know, like if it's a city where she, we know somebody or we have family or friends, if she's like, oh, you're going to, I want to go there. Yeah. Because I can see so-and-so and so-and-so and then there'll be things to do. But if I'm like, do you want to go to Lincoln, Nebraska? She's like, get the out of here no i don't i'm not going no yeah unless there's a targeted thing to do or someone yes. we know then she won't go something to see an event but for me i like to bring my wife because i really don't cheat on her which is crazy because I, I mean i was such a shit partner my whole life yeah and with her i've actually been like a really honest good husband like i don't f- around because i i'm afraid that if i do it and get away with it i'll do it i just don't want to wreck my marriage right um but i that's another reason to have her on the road too you know what I mean? Because it's hard not to look at, you know, go on To look at everything? Oh. oh, see, it's funny because I uh, I really enjoy nothing more than after the show going back to the hotel and being very sad and eating. That's that's my coming. I like that too. That's my I, coming. But I do that also. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> they're not mutually exclusive. I, I don't jerk down. off and then go to the gym. I I arc one on myself. I wipe it off with a sock and then order a cheeseburger. <laughs> that was a fucking very unhealthy day. <laughs> I order the cheeseburger right as I'm coming. That's, oh, that's, yeah. I just want to call down. Just, yeah. yeah. I can't Bacon. come unless I'm looking at it. <laughs> 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 Smell of fries in the room. <laughs> I had one time. This is where, I don't know where we were, but I but a guy that came into the room. You know these old, like, there's always like the porno joke of like the cleaning lady that comes in. It's like, sure, oh, sure. No, you know, this. Yeah. 
I had a guy come in. I think we were in Philly. I think we were in that in Philly, and the guy we ordered room service. We had been traveling. I just wanted to shove my face and then nap before the show. Right. And this guy came in, and he was young, good looking guy, foreign, and uh, he like dropped off my food, and I signed the thing. We were chatting just for a second. It was really nice. And then he was like kind of hanging around, and I was like. All right, man, I'm just going to eat up. And he's like, do you need anything else? I was like, no, no, I have everything I need. He's like, nothing at all? And then for a second, I was like, do I have to f*** this guy? Oh, do no. Do I have to f*** this guy? And I didn't because he wasn't my style. But I was sure. like, do, is he, do I just have to play into the part that he wants yeah. me to play into? Were you wearing snug underpants? <laughs> yeah. Maybe he read the wrong message. Yeah. You know, no, it's like whenever they do come to the door, though, I'm always overly conscious because I'm always na- I'm usually naked in my hotel room. Sure, I'm sure. almost never closed. I, yeah. I, for some reason, I always believe the moment you walk into a hotel room, Take get naked. Yeah. Why, I, why else are you? Do you have this little cute private room? I'm leaving my asshole print on every bit of furniture. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's right. Whenever ever you look at a chair, someone's like, "Can I sit there?" I'm like, "You can. I yeah, won't. I yeah. will not." They haven't flipped that cushion enough. But I always get naked in the hotel room, and I sleep naked. That was yeah. a point of contention. I asked my wife. I was like, "Do you should I not be sleeping naked?" She's like, "No, nah, they clean the sheets." But then I think. How much gross shit was in this hotel? Yeah, plus your head's on the pillow. So if your dick and thighs touch it, who cares? Your head is touching it. Well, and sometimes I put the pillows between my legs. So oh, then, I yeah. See. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. But. No, I, I do. <laughs> That's bad. Now that I think my, my cock and my balls and my asshole are on most of those pillows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know they're not clean in those cases. They're like, yeah, no, we'll flip them. Maybe. I hope not after hearing that. <laughs> no, they just put them from one room into the other room. That's all they do. They just keep switching them out and well, moving them around. Do you think the guy wanted a tip? Did you tip? Oh, of course I tip. Oh, yeah. I oh, my maybe God. He's like the uh, maybe he's like the doorman in the Jeffersons. Remember that guy would always show mm-hmm. up and just keep his hand keep out. Keep his hand out. Gave yeah. him a dollar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or maybe he wanted to f- you. It might have been a thing. He might have yeah. got a vibe from you. Should have done it. Did gay know? guys hit on you a lot? Like maybe he thought you were like. No, I don't. I don't exude exude any. Um, I don't think gay guys think that there's an opening there. But okay. I do think sometimes I'll be uh, friendly enough where maybe they'll go. Maybe uh. I can. F- this guy, yeah, maybe. he's on the road. Maybe he wants a blowjob. Yeah, yeah sure, sure. Right, right, exactly. Which I heard the other day from uh, Dan St. Germain had a great bit about that. He's like, I got my cock sucked by some guy in college, but that wasn't even close to being the gayest thing I've ever done. He's like, I was in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor <laughs> Dream Coat. <laughs> he's like, that's the gayest <laughs> thing I've ever done. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's Very such funny. a f- funny dude. In here... We pour whiskey, whiskey. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Rabbit Hole Distillery and their one-of-a-kind Kentucky bourbon and rye whiskeys. This stuff is such good sauce. Behind uh, Rabbit Hole's award-winning spirits is the story of their founder, Kaveh Zamanian. Talked about this dude for a while. He was just inducted in the Kentucky Bourbon Hall of Fame. Fastest to ever get inducted. Cheers for that. If you're looking for something truly original, truly unique, uh, that is a, at a wonderful price point, Rabbit Hole is the sauce that you need, right? They got uh, these one-of-a-kind personal recipes with specially malted grains. My favorite thing about these, uh, about this company, truly, um, people say they're small batch. They're not. They're lying to you. These, uh, these cats pull from under 15 barrels at a time. That is quality is going to be insured in every single drop. Uh, and uh, a lot of people are saying toasted barrels and all that stuff are specially releases, and they're not. These guys do it every time. They got four distinct expressions. Uh, they've got the Cave Hill Triple Malt Bourbon, the High Gold, High Ride Double Malt, the Boxer Grail, and of course this stuff that I'm sipping on, that Derringer PX Sherry that's finished uh, in those Pedro Jimenez casts. This stuff is sweet, delicious, dried fruit, a little bit of cherry, sweet wine's going to have you fallen in love. Uh, so go to rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. That's rabbitholedistillery.com slash buy now. Use the promo code RABBIT for $5 off your first order. Please drink responsibly. Displate is a -a one-of-a-kind metal poster designed to capture your unique passions. Displate created a 21st century canvas that's sturdy, magnet-mounted, and durable enough to withstand a lifetime of intense staring. You know, we've all had uh, we've all had posters our whole life, you know, and staring at them is, is fun, but with Display, you can customize, collect, and rearrange them at your will. My problem with posters when I was a kid in my room is they'd get torn off the walls, they'd rip easily, uh, and they'd leave holes in the walls or just scratch marks. Uh, now, each one of these Displays has taken over because they're a unique, safe, magnet-mounted system that only takes 20 seconds. No need to drill holes in your wall. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful, clean and seamless. They deliver their product worldwide in only four to five business states. The perfect alternative for standard paper posters that often get damaged. They're also eco-friendly. The whole company is carbon neutral. So if you want a new way of getting posters that are going to last so, 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 so much longer than those paper posters did, you got to try Display. 
Make sure to get your disc plates and use the link in the description. The discount will be applied automatically at the checkout or use code WHISKEY at the checkout to get 22% off for one to two disc plates or 33% off for three or more disc plates. Disc plates, go ahead and collect your passions right now. Displate.com slash whiskey ginger. Ginger. I like gingers. But it is it is true that it's like uh, if if you pick and recount all the times you had one of these little like is this a is this a gay moment or am I or am I reading this totally wrong? Yeah, like how many you've had over the course of your life? Because I myself, but forty thousand. Yeah, all yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a ton of them, and they all were. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard you say someone asked you, someone said, "Are you gay?" And you say, "No, no, I'm not." And you said, "But." I'm not afraid of dicks. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I, I don't claim to be straight either. Like, that's the thing people don't hear. They're like, he's married to somebody trans, and he's delusional. He's not gay. I didn't say I was straight. Right. I don't, I don't think if you're married to somebody and there's a dick in play that you're straight. I mean, sorry. I didn't mean, I, I, I don't know why that's a <laughs> news flash for people. But some people will disagree. Like, you're 100% hetero. I'm like, really? Is that what your gender studies professor told you? Right. I don't agree. And if it's changing shape so much anyway, it's weird that they, the irony is people are like, people can be fluid now. And then if somebody does claim something, they're like, well you, well, you can't do that. Well, this is where progressives are interesting to me. Like, they, they, they are so obsessed with saying, no, you're totally hetero. And it's like, you think you're progressive, but you're literally married to the idea of 1950s where the only right answer is hetero. Right. Like, that to you is the answer that you, everyone should be striving for. And it's just silly. It's weird. I, I saw a clip on TikTok the other day of people going back and forth about a girl. Um, she, she, went to a, she went to a lesbian bar, straight girl, went to a lesbian bar. And she was like, our, you know, my straight guy friend came in to drop something off to just say hi and then leave. And people, a woman walked up to him and was like, you're not supposed to be here. And she was like, are straight people not allowed in gay bars? And then, of course, there was half of the, half of the gay contingency online was like, yeah, of course not. You're not allowed to be. And the other half was like, nobody gives a. F-. And I was like, this is America in a nutshell. Yeah. There is no, nobody can agree on anything anyway. So don't be a dick and just do your own thing. It's kind of the consensus of all these opinions because everyone's got such a polarizing opinion about it. And you're like, I don't think if matters in fact justin martindale great comic i don't know if you know him but he used to drag me to gay bars in west hollywood when i lived in west hollywood constantly and i was always like are people gonna care that i'm here he's like not even a little bit why they, would they f- give a shit yeah I don't he's even like, know if, if I, you're cool with me and you're not being an asshole sure yeah as long as you're not rude like right. I, I don't uh, i don't even know if i believe i believe your story but i don't even know if i believe the guy that's that sounds like one of those anecdotal things like a woman joking goes hey what the hell are you doing here and then all right. of a sudden he's like and they told me not to come Right. They made me leave. <laughs> right. And now it's a story. It sounds like at a rally. It's like, and you know what they did to me? Yeah, what? They made me leave. Right. Who's that? Who's that? Open up. Let's see who it is. It was like a surprise. No. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> is Matt not there? You can just drop it there. He can sign for you. Oh, is that the delivery? <laughs> yeah. That's funny. It's, it's funny. <laughs> House fetter. All right, thanks, man. Uh, That's hilarious. Yes. It'd be funny to say, what do they deliver? A funny guest, and then a better comic comes <laughs> yeah, no, in, I no. believe. Thanks for your time, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, you know what's so funny is that guy and the other guy, the, the one time he goes, package, and I go, yeah, no, you just leave it there. And then he, he threw it against our outside door, and I was like, all right, right on. Yeah. I think LA delivery guys, they have it too good. They yeah. don't have to face any of the elements, it's always sunny. Like they never have a fucking. There's no hiccups. It's like my my uh, the mail uh, the mail carrier in our neighborhood. He's the meanest motherfucker on earth. He's so mean, and yeah. I love him because he's an asshole. Like I'll go, hey man, can you mail this out? He's like, no, put it in the box. I don't touch. And he'll and I'll, he'll make me wait a day f- to come grab it. And I think it's because he it he's sunshine living. Yeah, they're really shit. The employees of the post office, they, they really are. I had one recently who was kind of he was these uh, kind of cunty twice to me and Nikki, and so I, I filed a report against them. And the, the the post office just drags their feet on it, but I wanted this guy executed. <laughs> I fucking I wanted to hear like what happened. Yes, we took your case. We went to his house. We yeah. burned it while him and his family were asleep. Right, like right. I was fucking livid. <laughs> We murdered um, everybody that he knows. We stole from him. You now own his estate. <laughs> Whatever he used to have is now your property. What happened? What was he just being an asshole? Just a jerk off, like scolding everybody. Just a nobody, an emasculated <laughs> nothing. Just a lump. <laughs> and all you just see him is sitting there with his mask on and his little <laughs> shit head. Uh, but you know what it is? The problem is these poster guys now ring cameras and porch cameras are 
fucking them up and they can't do what they want. So when you tell a guy, just leave it, he's like, now I can throw it. Right. He, that's his chance to act up <laughs> yeah. and do what he wants that's to do. That's his fuck you to me. Exactly. Yeah. And he's allowed to because you told him to leave it there. I did too. Yeah, that's also true. I've been, we've also been porch pirated a few times. We got jacked uh, when we were gone. This is so insane. Of all the things to steal off of our porch, like of all the bullshit packages that right. come that are just like paper towels or whatever, it was a family ring for my wife. Ah. I know. My tax returns, which is insane. Crazy. And then a box of like gifting stuff of like uh for the sh- for the show. And so I didn't care about anything but the family ring. Of I was course. like, Man, what a fucking but also what a gamble for that person that got it. Of all the shit that they steal, you know, that they steal, throw it away, steal, throw it away. I was like, man, that motherfucker came up. Good for that bitch. And she looked right at our camera. And we gave it to the police. The police were like, we're not yeah. doing anything with this. We couldn't care less. They don't care. They're like, we're the LAPD. We don't fucking, this means literally nothing. I hit a guy with my car and cops never came. I hit a man years ago wow. with my car. Yeah, he's dead for sure. There's sure. no doubt Good in my you. mind. Yeah, but I hit him, call the cops. They'll come soon. Call them 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, 40 minutes. Never came. Yeah. The guy good. left. He walked away. Yeah. Good I for mean, you. he was, I mean, he, you know, he's wasn't, hurt. Yeah. Wasn't straight, sure. but who gives a shit? <laughs> yeah. well, he's gone. Do you take your insurance papers? You know, it's okay. I've told this story too, but he, he, they were acting so shady and I kept being like, give me your number. And his buddies were like, let's get the fuck out of here. They were being weird. So I thought oh, one of yeah. these guys doesn't want to see the cops for some reason. Yeah. I had a guy, I was leaving the Lincoln Tunnel or the Holland Tunnel in New York on my way to a gig. And this guy said I scraped his fender. I was with Karen Feehan. She's like, no, you didn't. So I'm like, oh, this jerk off is trying to scam. So I wanted to go through the tunnel and have him do it in Jersey because the traffic was so bad. But he flagged down the traffic cop and they made us pull over. He goes, wait for the police. And I'm like, this is going to be, a, like, I'm going to miss the gig. And there's a lot of money. And he's trying to fuck me to pay him. But I wound up just getting his number or whatever, and it ne- nothing ever came of it. We traded information. But it's like they fuck you like that to try to get you just to hand them cash. Sure. Well, that happens all the time, though, yeah. too. I had There was a girl, uh, a friend of mine, Brienne. She was parked out front of our old neighborhood. We ran into her. We were walking to get coffee, and we watched this old Russian guy just slam right into her car. And I mean, like, we were watching it happen in slow motion. I was like, what the fuck, yeah. dude? And he gets out, and he's like, no, you park over line. And I was like, no, she's in the... F- you pulled into the spot. And then me and him are arguing. I'm, like, fighting for her. It was the, yeah. You know, you get caught up in something, you're like, yep. I don't even want to be doing this right now. Yeah. How did I get stuck in the- I'm yelling at this guy. And then at some point, he goes, what do you want? What do you want? And I go, it's not my fucking car. You, you give her your information. You fucking hit her, you dickhead, because he was trying to walk away. And so then he grabs his wallet, pulls it out, and it's, you know, Costanza style. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a fucking novel. And he gra- just grabs a ton of cash. He's like, good? And I go, yes. Very good. Do you know how much and it was? Handed, it was, I mean, honestly, like if I'm not exaggerating, stack of hundreds. So maybe, I don't know. I don't even know. Maybe wow. like 12, 1300 bucks. I mean, it was like this. He didn't want any problems. He do, yeah. Obviously, he didn't want to see the police at all. Yeah. But I handed, I was right to her. I was like, okay, that's pretty fucking That's great. nice. Yeah. yeah. I also, I almost wanted to be like, do I get some negotiation kickback? Yeah, for exactly. That or... I have a percentage. <laughs> yeah. She me... gave you nothing? No. Nah, well, I don't know. I think she needed it more than I did at the time. Yeah. Which is funny. Now she's like, She's on one of these. She's on a huge net, uh, Netflix show called Genie in Georgia. Do you know what that is? It's anyway. It's I a, don't. She, it's like she. And when I met her, she was an actress doing a guest star on an old show I did called "I'm Dying Up Here" about the Comedy Store. Oh, I remember that. She show. She guest starred on it, and then now she's more famous than anybody on from our show. When I did Lucky Louie, uh, there was a scene. There was an episode where uh, uh, Louis uh, Mike Haggerty uh, played. I think it was Mike Haggerty and uh, Laura Keitlinger played. Uh, a couple, and uh, they had like a, a niece or something staying with them, and she was really bratty, and she hits on Louie. It was really funny, and it was Emma Stone. So like you wow. see her like years later, and it's like, wow, who knew? That little scene. It and is that, incredible. That's not what made her, but I mean. No, yeah. no, I think that did. I think that was the thing. It was just the scene, yeah. That was just that one scene. And she's always nice to me since then, which is so polite. Like, I'm a nothing. Like, you know what I mean? She's She, she was always very nice after that, which, you know, she didn't care. Yeah, but that's nice to it's it's nice to know that uh, I give more people the benefit of the doubt than you hear. Like you were just talking about before about Don Jr. and all that stuff. I think people's assumptions of who people are yeah. dynamically changes if you spend six seconds with them. You go, ah, yes. You may amplify your character for the sale of whatever you're doing in the entertainment world. You probably aren't that person that people most people think you are. And so it's nice to know that, you know, like she's probably still as humble as she ever has been yeah even though she's super famous i think i meet more people in our business in the entertainment world that aren't assholes that people might think are than are 
Yeah, I think most people I've met were fine. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, they're fine. You're like, I, mean, I interviewed Weinstein years ago, and he was very nice. Yeah. I mean, I, he was in our studio, so I didn't actually see the other side of him. Yeah. But he couldn't have been more pleasant. Right. So I guess if you have an interaction with somebody, and it's tolerable, your view of that person changes because it's they tough. were nice to you. Well, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, we, we tried to get Epstein on the show years ago, and we could we just couldn't. He was just I so know, busy. I know, I know. Glenn was schedule. always an easier booking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> His flight schedule was fucking <laughs> insane. This guy it was nonstop. Now, have you gotten since you're a New Yorker? Have you gotten a chance to go in the tunnels in Brooklyn that they dug underneath? Uh, no, we got to um, get you down there, dude. No, you mean the uh, the Hasidic Jews? Have yeah, been? you got to get down there. I don't know how anybody knew they were Jews. That's the fascinating part to me is that somebody's listening, going, "There's Jews under there." Yeah, yeah. it's like, how do you know they're Jews? They sound like Jews as they tap they're their Jewy. fingers. Yeah. They're down there. <laughs> I know they're down there. Yeah, validating all the QAnon vlogs like fucking immediately. Like, yeah. told you, yeah, I fucking told you they live underground. Why don't dude? you go back to New York with your Jew tunnels? <laughs> all right, good. Yeah, yeah I don't know what that was. It was weird, but I didn't find it. Uh, they were what were they doing? I'm, I'm, was it like a doomsday prep thing? I don't know anything about it. The 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 tr I think part of the truth that we heard was that it was to get from place to place during COVID because you weren't they weren't supposed to uh, oh go out yeah they dug tunnels yeah I mean it sounds like something fun to do you know what I mean it's almost like someone's gonna dig a tunnel and you're like that's not a fucking kind of I'm kind of bored I might well, you dig just a take tunnel. the ticket isn't that easier yeah let yeah. them give you a ticket yeah fuck it yeah just take the ticket take the ticket pay the ticket or dig the tunnel and have an adventure with your friends that's their goonies I guess so <laughs> but how do you dig in New York City it seems insane there obviously was something uh, well, you know, like half of New York is buried underground anyway. Yeah. So I'm sure there was stuff already built out that they were like, holy shit, if we remove this thing, look at all the shit that we saw. Right, right, right. We can't dig in, in L.A. We tried diligently, but it's just bedrock, man. We can't get it down It is, there. right? Sad. Yeah, we can't get down there. Yeah. Until uh, until the, the big one shakes us off the fucking planet. We had three days of rain and half of the city is shut down. I've been here all three days and it's, you know, I love, um, I love the weather. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I came, I brought the rain with me. You know, Thank God. Fun God jokes, bless. Fun little cute jokes I bring. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's weird. To say, I, I don't think I've, I've spent a decent amount of time here. I don't think I've ever seen it like this before. I've never. seen rain, but never three horrible days in a row. Yeah, people lose their people lose their minds, and that is, that becomes like a a joke in and of itself. People are like people don't know how to live in the rain in L.A. It's like. Yeah, but they literally built this place out of paper mache. Like, everyone I know's roof is falling in. Yeah. I mean, we did not build anything correct. We built it as cheap and fast as possible because people are like, what's going to get to it? Like, I, I remember when I first came out here and my mother came and visited and was like, I had slat windows, so they don't physically close all right. the way. They just layer. Yeah. And my mom was like, what about heat and cold leaking out? I'm like, there, it's not, there's nothing to get out really it doesn't matter. it doesn't get i know it's not you don't need to be sealed let it go but she was like that's that's like for the beach i'm like yeah i know it's fucking it's not a real place slats suck by the way whenever i go to a hotel and they only have blinds or slats i want to fucking throw a rock through the window because <laughs> i need it pitch black to sleep me too and when you go to a hotel any hotel that doesn't have uh room darkening blackout pitch black curtains is a shithole yeah i can't stand it i like the ones that have a shade a, th a thick curtain yep. and another one? Yeah. These guys. And Elvis's road crew to come in and put tin foil on the windows. He used to put tin foil really? on the windows. Yeah. Like you tin foil the windows so that uh, there's no light. Nothing's in. coming. Yeah. Because apparently Elvis would be up all night exercising. And he then, was, right? He yes. was a very fit man. Yes, he was <laughs> doing judo. Uh, and then, <laughs> he loved breathing exercises. He would <laughs> yes. put stuff up his nose to breathe. Yes. Right? And, and clean a mirror away. at the same time. <laughs> But he, uh, yeah, they said Elvis's people would put like tinfoil on the windows to block any and all light, and I just love that. That's that's sexy as shit. Yeah, See, that's that the great. Kind of stuff. Well, there should be at least a, every hotel should have at least one floor of of recluse rooms where yep. it's like there's no windows. It's totally. I wouldn't mind no window. I don't. I don't. I close them off anyway. Like I just spent a week in New York, and I don't think I fucking opened the blinds once in no. the hotel room. That's not what it's for. I'm there to go to bed, and that's the end of How it. How is your view though? If you have a nice view of the park or. Downtown or whatever, nothing, huh? Just mm, shit. Just some more bullshit. What just hotel? Some old guy. The one? Yeah. I don't know. It's up by, it's, it's, it was uptown because we were doing a press thing. It was like 58th and 7th or some oh, shit like okay, that. Yeah. Okay. Just below the park. So there wasn't a view of the park. You could like see the hotels facing the park. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right off of it. Yeah. Which, you know, no, it was fine. It was a nice hotel, but it's, but for me, hotels, like, especially when I'm on the road, I have no interest in like enjoying the room. I want to, I want to like, Put food in my body, yep. 
jerk off on myself. Sure. Fall asleep. Yep. That's Immediately. Gr- yes. And that com- a nice comfortable bed, uh, blackout curtains, a good air conditioner. Mm. Courtyard Marriott's rule. Like, yeah. I literally have left, I won't stay in Westons because they itch. The, the sheets itch. I have very delicate skin. So I like a good Courtyard Marriott. That's all <laughs> I need to be happy. <laughs> they do. They have itchy sheets. I never noticed. Yeah. This. Yeah. I don't like the detergent. They believe me. I had my road manager. Like he did a deep dive on the fucking, all the companies that are owned by this parent company use this detergent. It's a fucking nightmare. I'm difficult. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm a cunt. <laughs> nah, I never knew. Who would have known? Well, what do you find? Do you find like the highest end hotels? Do they satisfy you or no? Some They're do, bullshit. some don't. Like right. the Courtyard by Marriott is the best hotel. Like I am so comfortable in their bedding and the air conditioner is so potent. It's really just an awesome sleep experience. This is interesting to go down which ones are good and bad. Yeah, like I'll stay in. Some are great. Sometimes you don't know. I'll, I don't like W's. I don't like Westin's. Because again, they have that itchy, the, whatever their laundry detergent is, fucks me. I don't like a stiff sheet. Mm. I don't like a shit boutique hotel. Mm-hmm. Give me a gentleman's old school, <laughs> a fucking a Four Seasons. Uh, I, I love stuff like that, like a real, a Ritz, a gentleman's establishment. Right. Well, those are fancy ones. Fancy. The Courtyard Marriott's half the price. Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's also Double it's the value. Yeah, yeah. The val- well, the, anywhere my dad stayed while he was a, a, a traveling salesman, I was like, those are the hotels. He did a lot of a lot of courtyards, a whole bunch of courtyards. They're great, man. They're so comfy. But yeah. I, don't, I don't like five stars if they're itchy. I just don't, I don't, anything that's boutique or hipsterish, I despise. Yeah, because the hipster thing is just a high-end, uh, cheapy version of what they... Like, they're trying to make it look like a barn or some shit yeah, like that. I, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's funny you say that. I did New Year's Eve in Poughkeepsie uh, a, a year, two years ago, and, and they had one of those boutique hotels, uh-huh. and the bathroom door was on a giant, like, yeah, yeah, crack yeah. above it, and it was a big, heavy, like, barn door. I'm like, what the fuck? Stop with the cowhide shit seats. <laughs> Nobody likes that. <laughs> It's fucking uncomfortable. Yeah, I fucking I don't like that. Just give me the old school shit, man. Comfy chair. Give me the old like school. This, you lay back. You fucking right. put your feet up. It's great. How about casinos? We're on a casino run. You like? Do you like casinos or no? I do. I don't stay in them often enough. I've you know, I've been on the road in a while. I'm going back out now. Um, the Win in Vegas is probably the best casino hotel. Yeah. Uh, bed I've ever stayed in. Um, I think I've stayed there once or twice. Their buffet is awesome. Yeah, it I'm is. a big fan of the Win. I just don't have any reason to go out there. But when I am and I go there, I, I love that we just, hotel. We were out at the win. We loved Isn't it. Isn't it great? I fucking enjoy it, man. What a comfy, what a comfy bed, and what a delicious buffet in the yeah. morning. I love a good breakfast. And, buffet. and I'm also a, a a nerd golfer, and the golf course is out the back door. So oh. for me, it's like, oh, I can have breakfast at a delicious restaurant, and then walk 50 feet and go outside and go play golf in the morning. That to me is like my little slice of fucking heaven. That's the old Vegas that I think of. Right. That it's like, you know, like the Sinatra days. It's like, that's what I would love. Go yeah. golf, go go have a nice breakfast, have a couple cups of coffee, go upstairs, right? I, I actually, <clears throat> I've come accustomed to getting used to liking casinos a little bit. Something of the buzz of them is a little weird. It's beautiful. And you just get a bigger collection of lunatics. It's pure addiction. You're watching. Yeah. It's literally like if you if they were all computer monitors and there was just a bunch of people edging, looking at porn, <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. Or if there was a bunch of fat people go, like in go, uh, uh, gorging on, on donuts, it's, you're watching addicts. Right. Purely a wash in their addiction. Yeah. It's a really interesting <laughs> it's place. Brilliant. I don't fucking gamble at all because yeah. I don't trust it. I'm scared of it. Well, you're sober. Yes, and I'm but compulsive. So, yeah. And also the, the the gambling thing, you couldn't, if you do that, you think it'll trigger everything, out, trigger no, other stuff? No, I, I just know that I will enjoy the high of it mm-hmm. and I could see myself wasting my life in a casino. I'm not saying I would drink or do drugs, but I would lose a lot of money. I've watched guys do it, like guys I know. Friends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like I've heard the Norm stories that he lost a lot of fucking He did, money. yeah. I didn't know Norm like that. I knew him, but not, oh, like we never went on the road together. I never worked with him like that, but uh, I heard he was a big gambler. Yeah, I lost a lot of money. Yeah. I, I just, I, that, that's the, that's, it scares me enough to just stay far away from it. What's the thing that, What's the thing that gets you high then? What gets you the most high? Food or porn? Yeah. Like just jerking off. Love it. What about food porn? No, I don't like watching like fucking mukbang or any of that stuff. Yeah. Or some fucking some 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 person from Korea eating live squid. <laughs> yeah. No, it doesn't do it. Or just watching some slobby two thousand Big Macs does nothing for me. Yeah, I just want to see them grab their chest and fall face first into the food. <laughs> just have a heart attack live. Oh, yeah, I would love oh, it. Just, oh, just <laughs> oh, I pray for that. Stroke out, <laughs> faces falling. Yeah. There was a guy that we had on that show. Who's the guy that, that passed away? He would eat old shit. Remember that? We put him on the other show. 
No, nah, there was a guy Old that would shit like what? Like he like, would he would eat like t- like stuff from like thirty years ago. Yeah, yeah, he passed away sadly. But from that, he, no, from something else. But it was like he would open up a box from like forty five years ago. So the thing I we laughed about wow. the most was his reactions were amazing. I mean, it was more that he was like a he was it was like food comedy. Like right. it, I didn't care about him eating it. I just wanted to see him be like and like gag over like the smell of it because it was. For, what was his name? It was repulsive. Did he man. get sick? Obviously, yeah, multiple times he got sick. He would eat like army rations from fucking Vietnam and shit. It was, was he the wild. one? The, the MREs, yeah. Those uh, uh, there was a guy who did that. He ate all those meat, those sealed military meals. Yeah, some of those might be okay though. They have a long shelf life. Yeah, it's it's impressive to think that you could still put that in your body. That must mean it's not good for you. That's yeah. fucking it's crazy. Yeah. So food and porn are the two break points. But it's for mostly you. that's why I've gotten fatter. Like I'm not obese, but I know I'm a fucking. You're not fat. I am. I'm a fucking frog neck. You're idiot. fat to you. Yeah. You're fat I to you. Despise my body right now. Side blubber tits. How much? <laughs> uh, how much do you weigh? Don't know. I won't weigh myself. My wife likes me like this. She really does. She's so fucking nuts. She's like, I think you look great. Don't change at all. But I'm like, you just want me to have a fucking stroke so you can decorate the way you want. <laughs> like, that's what she wants. She wants me to be fucking shut down in the bed so she can take my fucking vintage kiss posters off the wall, <laughs> put up shit Marilyn Monroe pictures. <laughs> Do you think she's got this, like, uh, what, like, like, we'll get off on seeing you slowly fail away? Like, pushing you in a wheelchair would make her happy? No, because she would not. The, the, the whole me in the wheelchair, she wouldn't care, but the whole pushing part, she would hate. Right. Um, well, we'll get you the fucking the auto one. Yeah, we'll hire someone to push you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, she's just happy with me, like, this but i'm not i want to lose like 20 pounds are you have you always been this way about your body i had lost a lot I, yes my vision has always worked like I've, yeah. always, I've always been accurate <laughs> when i look good i know i look good uh but i was too skinny years ago i was in like 2016 2017 i was really fucking aidsy like when i look at old pictures of myself smiling i had that fucking oh he's too skinny yeah. like i look back and i'm like nah you look like shit like a ma- like a, a beautiful method a very funny method Ky- yeah and it's where some would say at a times amusing method right, right. it was fine <laughs> a moderately amusing <laughs> uh peaked in 2007 method <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you, but like that those army rations you got a good shelf life baby you're still fucking humming along no but i still make people's mouth numb and you will i like i still i have a nauseating effect you can get like the crackers down mm-hmm. but that's all i got left right. i got the crackers are edible but the rest of it's garbage you're a beautiful cracker Thank what you. can you say in here we pour whiskey, whiskey if i asked you guys how many subscriptions you were paying for uh off the top of your head would you know i doubt it i have so many it's ridiculous that's why rocket money here to help you out okay rocket money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending and helps lower your bills you can see all your subscriptions in one place and if you see something you don't like you say i don't want it uh, they can cancel it with just a tap. You can cancel it just with one little tap. You never have to get on the phone with customer service. They even are, are going to try to get your refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you up to 20%. That's pretty, pretty good. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill, and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. I was paying so much over uh, in apps. Some of them that I didn't know I was paying for stupidly couldn't cancel them just because being lazy or not contacting them. And some of the other ones I literally had no idea I was still paying for. A couple of apps that had recharged me multiple times. Times. And guess what? Rocket Money has over 5 million users, and they've uh, helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Let's go, baby. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash whiskey. That's rocketmoney.com slash whiskey. Rocketmoney.com, you know it, slash whiskey. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by BetterHelp. I've spoken about BetterHelp uh a ton, actually, because I do believe in them. I do believe in therapy, and I believe what they're doing is important. Um, and getting yourself a little bit of help goes a very, very long way, okay? Um, a lot of people are adverse to therapy because they just don't want to go somewhere and talk to someone in a room that they don't know and they feel vulnerable. Well, guess what? Better help is incredible uh, because it is done entirely online. If you're thinking about starting therapy, why not give BetterHelp a try? It's done entirely on the internet. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Fill out a brief questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I'm a big, big pusher of therapy. I think it's wonderful, man. Use it for whatever you need. It doesn't, doesn't have to be so deep. It doesn't have to be a lot of trauma and pain. It can be just something that you need to get off your chest about what's going on in your world. Become your own soulmate, all right, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash whiskey today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, better H-E-L-P dot com slash whiskey. Ginger. I like gingers. How many dates are you doing on the new tour? 
I don't know. We just added some, actually. I, I got uh, a, a 30 or 40. I'm going to keep adding, I think. Or maybe 20 at this point. But we just added some now that went on sale. I don't remember where. I mean, maybe Tampa and a few other is this places. Too, is this to cohesively put together an hour or no? I have the hour. I just don't know. Like, I've been working on... I do every Wednesday at the Fat Black Pussycat at the Comedy Cellar. So I do an hour that... Like, I, I, I'm talking about, like, my relationship. And I want to make sure that it's really good before I release it. Like, sure. I, I don't want to just rush to it. There's dick jokes in it, which are fine. But I don't want it to just be about that. Like, so I want... I want to I want to flush the material out a little bit more and maybe after the tour I will. Yeah. It's been a while since I shot anything so maybe at the end of this tour I'll shoot uh, at the, at the uh, you know Village Underground in the city. What's your you have it your way which you can now because of your you know who you are. What's your favorite run of is it clubs or theaters or like what's the preferred way to go about when you're building well the preferred way would be uh the theaters that i certainly can't sell out uh yeah you, know, yeah, you mark, can you can sell theaters some i can some i can't uh, you know my ticket sales are always last minute anyway um but I'm, right. I'm doing a small theater run now it's all i want small theaters um thousand seat maximum like nothing crazy i think small theaters are fucking beautiful they're amazing um and, and a few clubs like i'll do you know, like do the DC Improv or the Comedy Works in Denver or Tampa, size, but like clubs that I love. Yeah, um, but I prefer that. I, I, I mean, like you talk David Tell, he just loves clubs. Like, you know, I'm a club comic. Like, he could sell theaters, he could do the Beacon, but he loves doing clubs. He'd rather just add shows. Well, see, and it's on as I've gotten older in my career, I also have found that like doing the big rooms is fun, uh, but. Even I kind of get lost in it where I'm like, I don't know if I like saying it in this size of a room sometimes. I like this joke when it's smaller, yeah. in a smaller room. That's the tough thing is that, I mean, look, it's a blessing to be able to sell more tickets as you go along sometimes. But I do respect guys like Dave because it, then it's just all about the work. Yeah. You know, it's all about the minutia. Instead of like putting on a big fucking show because putting on a show gets tiring. You know, like Bobby and I are doing big, big fucking rooms. And we do two hours, and sometimes it fucking gets tiring. That you're do you like, do? On, you go on together? Yeah. So what we do is we have our uh, uh, Jesse Johnson, who's a great comic. She opens the show, and then Bob and I each do twenty, twenty five, thirty each. You know, and then we sure. switch off who does what, and then we all come out as a family and as a crew, and we do bits from the show that we do. And oh, okay. We interact with the audience, so it's getting them involved because the fans are you know such a big piece of that show. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, but we're doing a bunch of stand up up front, which gives me the opportunity to work out a little bit on the yeah. road. But also it's tough because they want the show too. So you have to balance this. Like It's like this just duality for me because I'm not really like a, I'm not huge when I do stand-up right. and Bob is. So it's tough for me to go from kind of my rhythm to then the bigger rhythm. So you, it sounds like we'll fucking cry me a river, but it's, exha it's exhausting. Two hours of it is fucking exhausting. When you see a guy like Schultz, like you, yeah. you see clips of Andrew in, in big rooms. He, he works well in a big room. Dane worked well in big rooms. Yeah. Um, you know, like, but then you're gonna see Louis, and he'll do a big room, and he's just the same as he is in a club, and it works. Like, you know, what I mean, like, that's, I mean, yeah, he doesn't change his energy at all. Like, he'll just be Louis, and he just does what he does in his t shirt and fucking destroys. Like, right. So, like, you know, what I mean, like, for me, I don't have the confidence to do that. You know, I would have to muscle it. And I, I just, I wouldn't trust myself in a big room to not be a disgusting hack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, the, like, the guys who can be themselves, yeah, are perfect for that. But I am afraid that my cowardice would lead me into doing something that every comedian would just be ashamed to know. Yeah, me. I'll sell, uh, I, yeah. I know I'll sell myself up the river. Fuck it. Uh, like, well, I've done I've done arenas with Bert. I did them with uh, Rogan, and yeah, you find yourself just like yeah. doing what they want you to do a little bit bigger because yeah. you're in that fucking. You have to fill this weird space. Yes, and I'm afraid accurately so that my words and thoughts won't do it, <laughs> and they don't. So it's like run around, you fucking thirty year chimp. And they do <laughs> more bananas, more bananas. <laughs> yeah. That is how, but uh, but there are times too when you're put, when you just you do have. To, I think a part of the reservation of preservation of your career is also acknowledging. Sometimes you're just you are tap dancing a little bit. Fuck oh it, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you still take corporates or no? No, they don't want me. I'm too dirty. I mean, I, they, yeah, there's no, a lot of dirt. There's companies now that 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 like that kind of stuff, right? They 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 do, but they'll say like their idea of just say whatever you want. Maybe you say shit in front of the CEO, but mm. like they have no idea the material. Right. Uh, oh, great, the Sandusky hunk. You know, like they, have, <laughs> they, they don't want that. Like, so I corporates, colleges, um, I, they they 
they don't ask for me and I don't offer to do them. I never got colleges. I think I did no. like two in my whole career. And I one time I did that NACA thing. Did you ever do the NACA thing? I did. Less yeah. than successful, some would say. Yeah, dude, Less I, than I, successful. I don't think they even <laughs> let me fucking I don't think they wanted me even remotely near it to even yeah. try to get colleges. I did very poorly there. Yeah. yeah, it just wasn't for me. And also I just realized I wasn't not only was I too dirty for them, as time went on, I was getting further and further away from college age where I was like, I don't even know why they'd want to see me anyway. Yeah, and a lot of them, it's like, I, not only do I see things differently than you, but I find your thought process to be boring and I don't respect the way you think. Right, like, I and, can't and, stand and it. it reads. Yeah, right. It reads. I can't so hide I, it. I don't know how I to I can't hide, hide it, it yeah. and you're not going to like, you know what I mean? When I say, look, I don't hate Trump, that uh, you're going to boo me. Like, I know that. Right, right. So why would I put myself in that position? You should just do a tour where you bring out Don Jr. with you to colleges, playing colleges all over the country. Yeah, with Don Jr. <laughs> He's a very good talker, too, so he, you know... His memes are very funny. Like, I don't know if he does them all or someone's helping him, but he's very, his, his Instagram has some really funny, caustic well, well, shit. Well, that's the thing. Trump may be one of the funniest motherfuckers on the internet I've ever seen. Hilarious. He's like almost undefeated. He put up that post. <laughs> he put up that last post about Biden. And it's just like, I don't know how even Biden doesn't want to retweet it because of how funny it is sometimes. What does it say? Like, it would, no, it's just, oh. it's him, it's just him doing like, uh, you, mocking like his 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 walking and all oh, that yeah. shit, his stumbling through everything, it just kind of feels like Biden could win to me if he just also was like, yeah, fuck it, that is me, and yeah. just fed into the beast a little bit. But he can't. Um, and it's it's just so funny how I, I, I lost my thought. You were talking about Biden and Trump. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember. What Feeding. I was saying. I'm saying it would be kind of funny to watch Biden like retweet a Trump tweet about him. Yeah. Oh, here's what I say. The thing with Trump, like calling people names and all that stuff, people are like oh, it's childish. But the accuracy, the way he redefines people in the public eye, or the way he says things that you didn't know you felt, like, uh, like uh, Chris Christie tried it. Chris Christie, who's yeah. a, an uncharismatic man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's yeah. unpleasant to look at. Yes. And he said. Uh, yeah, because Donald didn't want to debate. He goes, I'm going to call him Donald Duck because he's ducking. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, shut up, fatso. <laughs> Nobody fucking, everybody just wanted to hug him. Come here, shut up. And Trump's just like, uh, he's a disgusting slob. Yeah. And it worked, like, immediately. Yeah, like, exactly. Oh my God, have a sandwich, to... die on the beach. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I really went right for it, didn't he? Um, yeah, like that, but that it, it, the thing is, it's not just the name calling. It has to, it has to. What are the, who has it said that the audience, if, if you're okay with it, they're okay with it? Like, you can't sell it hoping they're okay with it. You have to be who you are, and the crowds can feel that. So when Trump says shit like that, people understand he means it. Like, it's coming from that place. Whereas Chris Christie, like, oh, you're just trying to do somebody else's thing. Yeah. And it's it doesn't work. Well, it's like the definitive difference when you see a comic who's really found what they, what they are or the cliche of what their voice is. Yeah. Because, man... Some comics you see, you know they're working out brand new whatever shit. But even though it doesn't really work, it still works. Yeah. Because you're like, nah, it's theirs anyway. It yeah. doesn't really matter that it's going through the machine. You know what I mean? You're still... You, you can still tell it's a good product somewhere in there. That's why I loathe Ron DeSantis so much because I think he reminds me of the kid who said something that the cool kids liked. And went, that's pretty cool you said that. Now he can't shut up about it. Right, he just right. woke, not broke, broke, not woke. He just keeps saying the same <laughs> things. But there's something instance, even though I think he's very conservative, he believes what he says, there's something about him that I'm like, nah, he's a fucking poser. Right. He's wearing heels in his boots. I'm so happy they fucking caught him that traipsing around. That was so around. funny, man. And, they, and they're right. Yeah. He's walking on the front of his feet. I've <laughs> never been happier. I couldn't believe they dissected that. The internet is so fucking amazing. <laughs> when they showed the diagram of the heels, I was like, holy fuck, that has to be real. Especially when they show the stills of him getting up out of a chair. And walking. Yeah. He, walk, he steps on the front. He's stepping on the ball of his feet, not the fucking the back. He's... See, we'd give him more props if he just walked in heels. Just get fucking cool heels. I probably would have asked for his number at one point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You want to be Norton's type? Yeah. DeSantis, just get some fucking heels, you pussy. Yeah, exactly. Just get some platforms and go to town. Stop <laughs> traipsing around like that and being <laughs> taller because you read that once, Fucking liar. Asshole. Yeah. <laughs> fucking big fruit. Just be who you are. <laughs> be who you are. By the way, it would be kind of rad if all this goes away and nothing, you know, if once he disappears, if he's like, I've been wanting to wear heels my whole fucking yeah. career. This yeah. is all I've actually really wanted. Yeah, it hurt me in the debates because my dick was hard the whole time. I just <laughs> stood up there with a pounding <laughs> erection, feeling pretty. <laughs> but 
Yeah, you know, who hasn't put panties on once in a while? Yeah, it's you fun know to try to be dirty. I, I've never done it. I've never it's put fun. on panties. It is fun, huh? I don't wear. I'm not a cross dresser. Like I don't wear them now. But yeah. I've done it in a few things. Like one girl would come over and I put on thigh highs and she would just blow me. And I thought, it was so dirty. It was just perverse. It felt great. How fun is it that? It was fun. Yeah. How did you learn to break that? How did you learn to have the balls to just do it? Uh, it's like Stop you know the person. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wouldn't necessarily take that chance. It depends on what turns the woman on. Like if a woman is dirty enough to enjoy that. But if a woman's like a, like oh, then it wouldn't do it. Right. I like I would be like, yeah, all right, you don't want to do that. But there was one woman I knew who used to like to dress guys up and humiliate them. That turned me on a lot. Like, because you like it. It's so fucking dirty. That it's you like, like the it. dom yeah. sub thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that was her vibe. And if it was her vibe, it turned me on. You never did the thing where it was like get kicked in the balls and all that shit. It stepped no. on your nuts or nothing. I like dominatrixes um, and I've dated one, but no, it was more like smothering and sensual domination. Like the attitude of being dominated, cuck stuff, but never pain, never kicked in the balls. Right. I wouldn't mind my nipples twisted a little. Uh, and we tried strap on, but it was just not happening. Yeah. Not happening. The beat the shit out of me thing, I never could wrap my head around. No. I was like, I don't want to be fucking a hit. I don't, get, but the people that get hard from getting hit, that's a psychological, that is a wild, deep dive into your psyche. It sure is. I envy them. How much, how easy would that be? <laughs> if I take jujitsu now, I'd be fucking, what a great <laughs> high that would be just to roll around I with a rod. I imagine some people are taking jujitsu for that. They like reason. the contact, yeah. Yeah. They go home and jerk off. Pain, pain never did it for me, ever. I don't like it. <laughs> Inflicting pain, I don't like getting it. Yeah, like the choke me thing. That feels good. I've done that. If somebody likes it, I've done it, but it doesn't express power to me. It was just a feeling of being choked when you come. I like have you an felt good. adamant fear of sure it's something smart bad will happen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the explanation, the cops. You're like, it was a mutual. We were both into yeah, she it. She likes it. I promise. Yeah, and it's like, sir, you know. Ha this human's half your size. Yeah. <laughs> Why? How hard? Do you, it's like the embarrassing part. Imagine calling the fucking family. I choked your daughter to death. Yeah. Oh, oh, what over an argument? No, we were <laughs> enjoying each other. We were fucking. Yeah. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was wonderful. And, and they like, say, "Why would you do that to your sister?" You know, <laughs> 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 no, but who? I mean, come on. Who isn't a? Who's a no bigger hero than David Carradine. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. Fucking. They said he died jerking off, and ah, oh, but who, who rules? King. Yeah, that's Good king shit. King. That's, that's king, king shit. shit right there, man. That's king. Do I have time to piss? I know we're in the middle of it. I don't want to stop, but I, I'm going to piss my pants. No, okay? go pee. Yeah, take him to pee. Yeah, I don't want to take him. Well, it could be both. These are chair. These are vintage chairs from, I don't even know. Uh, how, long, how long you had them? Seven or eight years. Oh, but they, but I. Oh yeah, what is that? What is on it? A picture of that. They got a website on it. Interesting. I like the long wick. It's a it's a wood wick. That's a cool. thick wick, yeah. It's yeah, you know me. Wick. I like a thick wick, baby. Hell yeah. I'm thick wicking all day. Thick black wick. Thick big <laughs> thick black wick. <laughs> Right yeah, let me huff that black wick right there. Yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah. Yeah, you like that better than yeah. white wicks, don't you? Yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, you like that thick black wick, don't you? I didn't know. I, I think it's because these chairs. Well, these this these chairs I bought from a vintage shop because I loved them so much and they were overpriced. Yeah. And that one got broken by um, by a famous uh, a famous drag queen, Trixie Mattel, broke that. I don't know Trixie. Oh um, yeah, her and. Uh, uh, Katya have a great. They have a big. She who's pretty, Katya? Uh, another famous drag queen in that space. Uh, but she broke that chair, and uh, she awesome. was like, "Oh, that's great. That now I'm. I feel fucking fat." I was like, "No, no, no. It's a vintage chair." She's like, "No, no, no." But how many guests have been in this? And I was like, mm, "A lot. Hundred and fifty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it was like one of those moments. Where she's like, "Fuck you, bad. Yeah. Fuck. I was like, "I'm so sorry." And we've also had Ralphie May. Yeah. 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 And he actually stood on this fuck. He jumped on this yeah, thing a he few did. times. Yeah, he did. He swam down onto it. Yeah. Were you close with him? I was friends with him. Yeah. Last time I saw him, he came to see me in uh, uh, Nashville. I was doing the club, and Ralphie came by to say hello, and um, he looked bad, like really bad. And we were talking, and I wanted to take a picture with him because I didn't see him in a while, but I'm like, no, I don't want him to think that I'm doing it because he's fucked up. I found a picture of, uh, it, it's from when uh, the Opie and Anthony show was touring and doing gigs like, we, you know, the ONA traveling virus, and there's a picture of us broadcasting in Vegas poolside, and I think Anthony's in the pic, and I am, I might be off to the side, and it's uh, Patrice, Otto, and Ralphie, and it's like, fuck, all those guys are dead. Wow. Ten years later, it's crazy. That's fucking nuts. Man. I know. I don't know if you knew Otto and George, but Otto was a really very underrated 
guy, very funny guy. As a comedian? Yeah. yeah. As a person, hilarious. Yeah. But yeah, very, very funny guy. He was a ventriloquist, and we normally, you know, comics are usually shitty with ventriloquists, but he was the, he was brilliantly funny. Comics are shitty about fucking everything. They really are. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, it they turns really out are. we're dickheads about fucking yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. Maybe it's we should just focus on our own fucking right. dreck. Well, that's why what, what happened. I think the thing that happens with comics is there is inherently this judgmental yeah. thing that comes along with like the purity and whatever the fuck that even means. Because if you look back to the beginnings of all this anyway, uh, comedy or live performance, it all comes from like these vaudevillian, uh, multi layered uh, variety acts anyway. So, what's the purity in saying, like, you can't use this or you can't do that or you. The, the idea that we just have to be just us with the microphone saying one thing, doing it a type of way, it's all fucking bullshit. Yeah. Whatever's going to make your audience l- enjoy you and your performance, I couldn't fucking care less. Yeah, a thousand years ago, you would have put on curly Q shoes with a bell on them, you fucking right, right, right. You would have ran around <laughs> dancing entertaining chuckles, the king. So they don't cut your fucking head yeah, off. With yeah, with a fun hat, a five-pointed hat with bells. <laughs> <laughs> Gesturing would be so. Much. I would have loved to be a jester. That would, that's like you fucking sign me up. Dude. The pressure of that. Yeah. The pressure. pressure. The pressure would be so great. Not feeling it. Yeah. You think Madison Square Garden is hard? Dave Chappelle, try yeah. being a fucking je- try. Try King Edward the Fourth. Yeah. Or Henry the Eighth. Yeah. Henry the Eighth. Oh. Just tapping his foot. Yeah. Just staring at you, yeah. not laughing. And you catch him just glancing at his axe off to the side, yeah. like I. That's, Pointing at it. It's a new That's axe. what corporate gigs feel like. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like you're a fucking jester waiting for them to make the decision whether or not they're going to f- f- kill you or cut you off early. Would they kill the jester? I don't know if they would or would he just get fired. What was being fired for a court gesture? I think jesters court did jester. get, f- I think they got murdered. I feel like they did get fucking murdered. Maybe back if then. you were offensive, but what if you just weren't good? Like, would the king ever go next? Would there be a rotating? Well, you know, you know what it's like? Uh, they got rid. They took care of you. So who knows? Uh, you know, that's one of those like uh, they banish you probably down to a place where you d- you you die anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the sh- like the shit ravines. You know, they had those old tunnels where because all the toilets would go down to one shit ravine oh, that would pool that. out. Yeah, I mean, no sewer system whatsoever. Then maybe they just throw you in the shit ravine and yeah. then you hang out for a little while. Head first, dip yeah. you in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dip you dip you down. Dip you in. The that's ravine. where Dairy Queen got that whole idea yeah. from. Of dipping yeah. you down. Yeah, yeah pulling a jester out of a shit ravine. <laughs> <laughs> that looks delicious. <laughs> <laughs> this looks pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, I think I never get bothered by... I used to think that there was some sort of purity to it, and then you see enough different kinds of acts where it's like, oh, I just... Like, I like a Colin Quinn because of his style, and then I yeah. like a, a bigger, more boisterous comic because of their... I just... I don't know. It doesn't really... Like, to me, it's actually more interesting to find younger comics who are super unique and don't do anything like I've ever seen before. I get interested in it immediately because I'm like, oh, this is cool. I've never seen this guy. Like we talked about the kid the other day, that Morgan J kid. He he's very interactive with the audience and he's a phenomenal singing voice. I like, and he does all this different shit. And it's like, I think it's cool to see something different. Yeah, and and it's as long as you're true to who you are, what makes you funny as a person. That's the only thing you need to worry about. Like, because comedians again will have opinions and this this, this fake attachment to what they consider making it art. And it's like, just do what you do. Who gives a fuck? Yeah, nobody cares. Mind your business. We're all That's why comedians off. getting angry at other comedians for jokes. Fucking eat shit. Eat Who shit. cares? Yeah. I have no, I don't care. Yeah. You, your platform. Oh, shut up. <laughs> do what you want with your fucking platform. I don't care. <laughs> Speaking of platform, Ron DeSantis, we're going to say it one more time. Please put on platform shoes. Absolutely. Just around. wear a skirt already. Stop yeah. trying to be Alfie, you fucking little, <laughs> you little Nancy. <laughs> Just get out there and traipse and then talk about how much you hate gays. I like that, Nancy. Ninny. Ninny was a good one. Was that for gays? Yeah, you know, you little Ninny. Yeah, uh, you never heard that one? No, Panty Boy. Panty Boy. I Ooh. saw one video of this woman used to fuck guys. And make her husband just like suck her toes. And she's like, that's it, panty boy. And I fucking, I think my cum hit the ceiling. I was like, it's it's so dirty. Because they seem like a real couple. Yeah. And she's like, that's it, panty boy. And she slapped him. I was like, oh, he must love that being called panty boy. Oh, he's sucking her fucking feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. While she was taking a real cock. You so know? demeaning. Yeah, I used to have this beautiful woman who would talk to me about that. We never had a threesome, but she was telling me how, like, when she got fucked by a guy with a bigger dick, I was just going to have to suck her toes. Wow. That was a source of great pleasure. <laughs> yeah, but I never did it, because I was like, nah, I just didn't. No cuckery for you at all. I've tried a little bit, sure, but uh, not in my current marriage or my relationship now, but I've done a couple of them, and the, I've tried most of it, and it was okay. You, you got to you gotta respect the boundaries and draw the lines, Yeah. but talking about a lot of that stuff is much better. I'm a talker. You talk it out. Talk it out, text it out. 
I have a ferocious appetite for that. But as far as doing it, like, make sure you're ready. Let's make sure we're ready. We, you know, one girl I tried cuck stuff with, uh, I watched her blow guys a couple times. It was hot, but it was, uh, I mean, that was two and a half years into a relationship where we both knew it was okay. Right, right, right. And then we broke up right after. Who finds the guy? She did. We would look on, this back when Craigslist was on. And she, was, she used to talk dirty to them on the phone while I fucked her. It was, it was hot. What, being on the phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would look at guys who would send her pictures, and she thought they had a big dick or she liked them. Like, I would just either fuck her or go down on her while she was on the phone with them, and they didn't know. That's fucking wild. Yeah, it was fun. It would turn her on a lot, and we did it from you know, home. There was no one no, no one else involved. Comfort of your own house. Just just in the bedroom. They guys don't know on the other line. No, that was the fun part. Yeah, that is really That was fun. the fun part. <laughs> is, you create... You, you, you are like the... Uh, you were the guy that created all those great categories of porn that we now enjoy today. Yeah, You're the yeah. godfather of all that stuff. Yeah, eating it while she talks to the movie. Are there any of those videos? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, the cuckery thing, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's for me, it's like, it'd be so tough. It'd be so Oh, sure, for tough. most guys, understandable. So yeah. Ego shit, I guess. That's really what it is. It's yeah. E- and if you ego death yourself, then you just get over it and probably just stop giving yeah, up. Yes, the thing. You, 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 maybe I, I came to the conclusion that I'm a nothing. So I think once you get to that <laughs> point. <laughs> I have a nothing, and she deserves something. She deserves the world, and she deserves a big black wick. Yeah, at some point. Yeah, or a uh, white one, or but whatever color she wants, whatever whatever hurts more than mine does. God bless her. <laughs> God bless her. Let it hit the walls. You never felt that before, did you? Uh, people at home, uh, please check out. Now it can't be the pod; it has to be a video installation, right? Is well, that- these are actual videos. Like we've t- we taped something that was like this but it was like it, it can't be released as audio only but it could get it's in the infancy it's not worked out yet our background is not worked out but we right. haven't put that up yet the videos we have now it's just like our first anniversary and just little pieces of our live most of them are like 10 minutes 12 minutes they're not long but you're still going to keep building that as a as like a yeah, like I love video it. show or a pod show whatever you want on call YouTube, it on youtube whatever it is like i love yeah. it man i i'm enjoying doing it uh, it's, it's, it's what we want to, like, she and I are both really happy with it, so there's no one telling us, don't say that or don't, so it's like, you know what I mean, like, if it sucks, if people don't like it, well, then it's our fault. Right. We can't blame anyone but ourselves. Well, it's probably not gonna suck, and then also, fans at home, uh, go, go check out Jim on tour, uh, what's the website? JimNorton.com for my, my dates, the tour picture it, I, I, is fucking awful, I was fat when he took it, my head is pale, and, uh, you Nick, swollen in it? I'm swollen. Now, and now I like have to see it. Nikki like... and Jim NYC is the YouTube page. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the, the picture you'll see. I uh, like see it was it, it wasn't we, like literally he was just snapping photos as she was trying to fix my shirt. But it was a shirt she likes me in, but I was too fat for it. And I hate this tour picture. It's not good. It's this, not catchy. It oh, stinks. On. It's JimNorton.com, right? Yeah. The tour picture when it goes to tour, look it on a phone especially. <laughs> what a fucking egg-headed nothing. I mean, it's a terrible photo. It's a, it's a terrible, great, it's a, it's a great a pic. terrible fucking photo. <laughs> but wait, yet you still have it up on there. Because it honestly was the least awful photo taken me that day. I looked so fat. This doesn't I'm, look anything like you. I'm much fatter there than I am now, and that's saying something. That's probably about two months ago. Right. Can I see it again while you hold it up? Yeah, hold on. Let me look at it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just a pig, a fucking <laughs> fat pig. This doesn't really look like you it's at all. It's washed though. out. It's shit. People are uh, gonna go to this and go, "That's not the Jim Norton that I think I know." Yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a new one. We'll take get you it. a new one soon. Yeah, I have to very soon. It's well, go to jimnorton.com. Check out the tour dates. I appreciate you coming very much. Look into that camera right there. That's yours. And say we end the episode the same way. One word or one phrase, whatever comes to mind to end the episode. Whenever you're ready. Silly goose. In here. We pour whisk, 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 whisk. You were that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy, 